following are the words of Noel DiGirolamo, president of the Suffolk County Police Benevolent Association. Police officers are already being targeted for assassination. Releasing their personal information to criminals will only further endanger them. Stand with law enforcement. Defend the police. Your Island, live and local, with your host, Tom Shalero, on 1039 LI News Radio. And once again, welcome back as we're moving right along with our major discussions of the issues of the day. And uh, again, pleasure to bring back Lou Savello. Lou is the second VP of the Suffolk County PBA, again, representing the men and women of law enforcement here in Suffolk County that we're all very, very proud of that do a fantastic job. But there are forces out there of an evil nature and uh, it just gets the blood boiling uh, whenever I see or read. Obviously, we're talk, talking about our our uh, legislator out there, uh, Bob Trotter, who has done such, uh, uh, you know, insane things when it comes right down to it, uh, surreptitiously recording the police commissioner, all about it. And it seems like it's all about him. And then, of course, uh, the local paper today, I don't even like to say their name, running an editorial that essentially was fake news, twisted upside down. I know I'm livid. I wanted, I wanted Lou to come on to really give us his take to just how wrong the reporting is. Lou Savella, how are you, my friend? Hey, Tom, I'm doing well. Thank you for having me on. Great to be here with you, Tom. Yeah, I, and I appreciate that, Lou. Uh, there are issues out there. Police officers have a right to be involved in politics. Uh, we have rights of American citizens. We all have our points of view. And you cannot stifle that because somebody wears a uniform or somebody has a, a thinking of a vocation that they should be eliminated from politics. Supreme Court has ruled into that. And it almost seems like uh, that one legislator uh, wants to change that. And then to see that the local newspaper thinks that they're going to side uh, with his perverse thinking and in essentially siding with his perverse thinking, still saying he's wrong. So one gets you thinking that how, how are we dealing with this in terms of a rational thought when it's nothing more than fake news? Lou, your thoughts on all this? Yeah, absolutely, Tom. Uh, you know, I think this is a prime example of why people don't trust the media. You know, I mean, just look at the, uh, the, uh, the uh, headline here, right? You don't need to go any further than the headline to see how biased this article is. Target the PBA. Target the PBA. That's the headline in the editorial. You know, uh, and it, like you said, Tom, this uh, incident is essentially uh, Legislator Trotta recorded, secretly recorded, a public official and then attempted to coerce him in an open meeting. Right. That's the issue at hand here. And Newsday, uh, what would a, a responsible news publication do? You know, they, they would want to know, well, what were you planning to do with this recording? Um, you know, have you recorded anybody else? Have you recorded executive session? Have you tried to record and leverage other legislators? Have you attempted to blackmail other public officials? But, Tom, they don't ask these questions because they don't care. They don't care about the answers. Instead, Newsday simply recounts uh, the old, tired, false allegations against the men and women of the PBA, which all seem to revolve around that somehow our members are being forced uh, into doing something that they don't want to do, which on its face, Tom, is ridiculous. Uh, these allegations are false. My members risk their lives for a living. Uh, they wear bulletproof vests. They carry guns. Uh, trust me, if there's something they don't want to do, uh, there's no way that I am forcing them to do it. So they're, they, they're absurd, these allegations. Um, but Newsday sees fit to recount them once again. And then uh, the, the way they sum it up towards the end of the article, they say, um, if the rules are being broken here by the PBA, then the PBA should be held accountable. So, you know, in and of itself, y y you just see how um, inept they are, or maybe it's not that they're inept or they, they just have an agenda here because they're admitting in that very sentence they don't even know what the rules are. Like, if the rules are being broken, then they should... So you don't know what the rules are and you're admitting it. But what's even more telling is what comes next, where they say, well, if the PBA is following all the rules, well, then we should change the rules. We should rig the system to get the PBA. We have to get the PBA. And then I go back to the title of the, of the editorial, Tom, which is Target the PBA. <laughs> we have to get the PBA. Regardless if they're following the rules or not, we have to get them. And they see fit to cover up for Legislator Trotter. You know, when you look at his egregious behavior, you know, they admit, well, maybe he stepped over the line just a little bit when he made this secret recording. You know, 
But in New York, it's not illegal to record someone. Well, no, in New York, it's not illegal to record someone. What is illegal is when you take that recording and you attempt to coerce them into doing something. That is illegal here in New York. I think it's illegal probably in the whole country to do that. And that's exactly what he does in an open forum. You hear him saying, I want you to do X to the police commissioner. I want you to go after the PBA. I want you to go after the... And then when he doesn't get his way, he whips out this secret recording. Right? What, you know, what is the implication there, Tom? If you don't do what I want you to do, right? Or else, or else. And news, they completely disinterested in this. And like I said, they, they sort of flippantly dismiss it in the article. Like, oh, well, he stepped over, the, uh, you know, stepped over the line a little here. No, he stepped over the line a lot. In fact, you know, he has, you know, compromised the entire legislature because... Tom, how can you do your job as a legislator? You know, they routinely have to talk to department heads. They routinely have to talk to department heads uh, in confidence. So if you're a department head, and I can can tell you here in the police department, no one wants to talk to any legislator. Would you want to go in to a legislator and talk about a problem, maybe with uh, management or a problem that you're having in, you know, in the area that you serve and worry about whatever you say is going to be recorded and then used against you or used to extract some sort of uh, concession or something, something from you? No public official wants to do that. No department head wants to do that. And since the legislature hasn't taken any action thus far, you know, how can any of them do their job? You know, no. I action. think what he's done is, yeah. I, I think you know, Lou, what he's done is he's compromised good government uh, all right. by himself right here in Suffolk County. I mean, our police department and law enforcement is really the number one issue. In Suffolk County, you ask any resident out there, they love our police department. They love the fact that they feel safe in our communities. Our men and women do the best job ever. And you so articulated it. And I say this all the time. You know, they risk their lives every single day. That's not a joke. Just look at the numbers across the country. And they need every single bit of support. So now you have a legislator who essentially uh, has a personal vendetta. Which is really what it is. And that personal vendetta is that uh, the PBA has so chosen that they're not going to support him politically when he runs for election or re-election or what have you. But to take the use of his office and usurp his powers, which is what he's doing, his authority as a legislator, to go up against our police department. And, of course, to take the organization. See, PBAs, in in my mind, are labor organizations that represent the best interests of their membership, just like the AFL-CIO or the Long Island Federal. Federation of Labor or the uh, uh, the unions that represent LIPA, our electrical unions, our Teamsters unions, and so on. It's all part of the American landscape of what works, and that uh, most organizations that we support happen to be labor-oriented. And the American people support that to a large extent. Uh, for some reason, Newsday uh, has uh, ignored that and wants to go after uh, the PBA, which I find absolutely absurd because ba- Rob Trotter does. And why does Rob Trotter want to do that? And he wants to stop men and women from exercising their constitutional rights in order to get involved in political thought and political campaigns and so on because they don't like him. Really? Is that really what we're talking about here? And for any organization, I know I'm getting far off on this, but uh, any organization to support him on this, such as the Daily Newspaper in Nassau and Suffolk County, uh, to, to go after that is absolutely absurd. And I'm glad we have this forum today to really tell the truth, because the lie and the lack of transparency is the worst thing going, Lou. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Let, let, you know, let's take a close look at this, Tom. So you have a very, very liberal news publication, you know, essentially covering for someone who purports himself to be a conservative legislator. It really doesn't, you know, there's a disconnect there. It doesn't make sense. Um, and look at the history of how they covered for him. So, you know, in this article, they admit that he slightly stepped over the line. Let's look at his history of stepping over the line. This is a guy, right, who has again and again utilized the threats of violence against his political foes, right? And there are stories about this that you can see out there, the, the ones that Newsday couldn't obscure and had to report on, you know, no less the ones that we probably don't know about. But we have an instance of, of over uh, a copier in some paper that he he violently threatens one of his, uh, his co-workers. Workers. We have the deputy county executive who he threatens, and I'll quote Newsday here, he threatens to break his arm, right? And Tom, your own show, he barges in. And, you know, if he, if uh, I know if uh, Assemblyman Doug Smith didn't get between the two of you, you would have been rolling around with a legislator. <laughs> so all of these things, and not once has Newsday called him to account, right? Called for his resignation. Uh, you know, you, you have a guy 
who has a history of egregious behavior. This is just the latest in his long, long line of behavior that wouldn't be tolerated if this was somebody that news they didn't like, right? So why, why do you have this? And I, and I really believe it's because, you know, legislator Trotta fits in with the, the progressive, woke media agenda. He really does. And you, you, you need to look no further than the story in the New York Times, Tom, where we had during the police reform, uh, we had a group of socialists that were very vocal about what they wanted to do. They came up with a plan. We have uh, the people's plan. This is what, well, now I'll sum up the people's plan for you, Tom. Basically, they wanted to defund and dismantle the Suffolk County Police Department. All those things that you see in New York City, in the in Seattle, in the autonomous zones where police are, can't pull people over, police shouldn't have guns, you know, all of that they wanted to bring right here to Suffolk County. And who did they look to for support? They looked to legislative Trotta. And Legislator Trotta was more than happy to help him. And you can go read this in the New York Times, right? Where he, the quote he gives to the New York Times reporter is, oh, you shouldn't say you want to defund the police. You should do what I do. You should tell them that you love the police. Well, Tom, the socialists don't love the police. And Legislator Trotta knows that, right? You should just say we can't afford them, right? So he tells the socialist to lie. If you really want to defund the police, what should you do according to Legislator Trotta? You should lie just like he does. He lies, right? So he finds, he finds this common ground with this progressive agenda. Now, do I believe he's a socialist? Or I believe, you know, he's a pro trotter He is completely about himself, and anything that can, you know, achieve that, achieve to his own benefit, is what he does. And it, it truly is disgraceful. It is disgraceful for this news publication to continue to cover him and not to report the news fairly. And that's what we're missing here, Tom. And, and you know, we talk about police reform, police reform, police reform. If there is any profession that needs to be reformed, it is journalism. Enough with this agenda-driven journalism. Just report the news fairly. This is not, like I said, they don't even want to ask the questions, Tom. They don't even want to know what's on that recording. Have they asked for a copy of it? You know, they don't want to know if he's recording other people. They don't want to know if he's used recordings to coerce other people. And they certainly don't want to report, there's nothing in this article, in this editorial, about his long history of threatening people, not just with recordings, but threatening them with violence, actual violence. This is documented, Tom, and I, and I know you know this firsthand. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm telling you, Lou, you're hitting this thing right on the head, and I think it, it's articulated in such a way that it's as clear as day, it's as transparent as day. It's just that when you, when you deal with a um, a politician, uh, a policymaker, it 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 does it does border on the fact that we do have to speak out against it. Look what happened in our legislature: the doing away with the civil service law 50A and how uh, detrimental that can be, and going to court and try to right the wrongs about transparency and also about the ability for police officers is to be free from uh, the, uh, the the knowledge of where they live or their service records and so on. Very, very dangerous concepts. And yet, as you speak about that socialist agenda and for legislative trotter to be allied with, and yes, a, a surreptitious way in which to, in which to do that. So I, I fear the fact that if we don't speak out against this, the secret recording of a police commissioner, again, a war, and he's declared war on the PBA, you know, an organization that does so good, so much good in this county, and that uh, we need to get that word out there. Uh, there is an agenda here, but the agenda is all his. Uh, it's clear the agenda is all his. It's not for the good of his constituency, the 75,000 people that he represents in his legislative district, and it's not certainly for the benefit of the county uh, and how important this year's elections are all going to be. Because I know uh, when last time you were on, numerous phone calls came in in support of the points of view that you are taking and other members of the PBA are taking in terms of what you do for your membership, because what you do for your membership is what we're doing also for, for the people of Suffolk County and how important that is. Uh, this guy's a drag. He's a he's a dra he's dragging people down. And I think it, it, it really is important. Um, Lou. Yeah, Tom, I couldn't agree more, and I think he, he hasn't just declared war on the men and women of law enforcement. He's declared war on his own community. I mean, this is somebody who has uh, abandoned his oath of office at every single turn, whether it was defunding and dismantling this police department because it benefited his political agenda, or right up until now, where he's crippled the entire legislature, where department heads in this county do not trust the legislature. Um, you know, they have allowed someone to openly coerce uh, a police commissioner, and they haven't taken any action, right? So action needs to be taken. Legislator Trotta shouldn't just resign from the Public Safety Committee. He should resign as a legislator. 
Yeah, and I and I think that's uh, that is something I know many of us would certainly like to see, and would probably have a a county holiday when that when that does happen. You know, going going back to that editorial, uh, I called it initially fake news, and I think you did a great job in taking it apart line by line and refuting the points that were made there. Uh, I would just hope. That uh, and uh, there are members of his own political party, although I, I believe this should transcend Democrats, Republicans and so on. It's about decency in government. Uh, and I believe there are allies that the PBA has among members of his political party that are trying to see him uh, calm it down or at least to try to stop the embarrassment of what they're doing here. But again, that's not having. And I think Newsday alluded to that also, that uh, he's ignoring uh, the uh, the suggestions and the recommendations that are being given to him by members of his own political party. And many of us recognize that. You see it in the U.S. Congress. You see it in the State Assembly and State Senate. You have the caucuses and the meetings and, and so on. But it's just not happening here, which goes back to the whole thing. And news they didn't recognize this. It's all about Rob Trotter. Right. And I think each of these legislators has a choice to make, Tom. They can uh, align themselves with the woke Newsday agenda, which will allow Legislator Trotta to go on threatening people, to go on secretly recording people, to go on being a bully. This is exactly what he is. He is a schoolyard bully. Or they can side with the people of Suffolk County, with the men and women of law enforcement, and they can take the action that so desperately should have been taken a long time ago to curb the egregious behavior. Hoping that uh, this editorial today will see the response from other readers of of Newsday and when they read that editorial and, and we'll see what some of the response is. But I'm glad that we had the opportunity today. Again, I'm with Lou Savello, second VP of the uh, Suffolk County PBA and uh, moving forward with this and how important this is. Lou, any final thoughts? Yes, Tom, I would just ask your listeners uh, to go to our website, www.suffolkpba.org. There we have an online uh, petition calling for Legislator Trotter's removal from the Public Safety Committee and for a full ethics investigation into his behavior. I'd ask every one of your listeners not only to fill it out, but please send it to your friends and family, and uh, that would be a big help to us. And uh, thank you very much for having me on, Tom car with that it's so easy folks i've done it i know a couple of people that uh, have called in and asked about it have done it it's the easiest thing uh, to do that you'll certainly get a copy of the letter you know what you're saying to the legislators but it is that important uh it's all about good government it's all about uh supporting our police department supporting our pba and how important it is uh and the great work that they do lou thank you very much keep up the good work my friend my pleasure thanks Tom. Okay. I'll tell you, folks, when it is, it's almost like it never ends, uh, particularly when it comes down to the news media and our police departments and so on. Uh, we saw uh, throughout this country, whenever a uh, isolated incident takes place or something happens, that there is almost a, uh, a concerted effort uh, to knock down what's the most important thing that we have right now is public service. And the most important thing with that public service is law enforcement. And law enforcement is a key integral part of what our community stands for and how important it is to keep our people safe and uh, I, I get an opportunity to speak to law enforcement all across the country and how they need to be supported by their local governments and so on and to see what happened uh, in this case with legislator Trotter and what he did at that public safety committee and the fact that he embarrassed what it's a regular guest on this program is Rodney Harrison, and I just love having him on. He's on every other week, as is the sheriff and as is the DA, Ray Tierney. Uh, just great having them on. And what they care about is putting information out to you folks so that you know what they're doing. And these are people that are honest hardworking people, not like some self-serving legislator that gets mad if you get mad at him or if you say something against him and he's got a personal vendetta. These are professionals, and we are lucky enough here in Suffolk County to have those professionals, and including people that work for organizations like the PBA, like Lou Savello, second VP. Uh, they care about one thing. They care about the, the benefit and the and the uh, the goodwill of their organization of their men and women of a police department they need to be protected and who's going to speak out for them and how important that is so when we do this on this radio show whether it's uh, Errol Toulon or Ray Tanney or Rodney Harrison the whole idea is for public information so that you folks know that what we have in this county is a good thing 
and that to have a legislator that wants to tear that down for his own personal vendetta, his own personal vindictiveness is absolutely wrong. And it has to be said. And I'm glad we had an opportunity to say it in that right now, even in conjunction with a newspaper that just doesn't like cops. And I think that's an important aspect.